to our second Legend of Vox Machina wash party. Wow, we are already off to a great start. I am Mika Burton, and tonight we will be watching episodes four through six of the Legend of Vox Machina. Joining me are, drum roll please, we got the fantastic Laura Bailey. Oh, hey. Introduce yourself, tell oh, us what yes. you're about. I, hi, I'm, I'm Laura Bailey. <laughs> I play Vexalia in The Legend of Vox Machina. Uh, she's, you know, she's hot. Don't be fooled by her cold exterior. She's nothing but a big softy. Wonderful. And next we have Liam O'Brien. Can't top that. Hi, I'm Liam O'Brien. <laughs> I play Vax, a resident sneaky boy, uh, handling breaking and entering, master of doors and stuff. That's me. I Did you say you're my twin? I'm her twin. <laughs> <laughs> And we also have Talison Jaffe. Uh, hello, I'm Talison Jaffe. I am uh, playing Percival de Rollo in this show, who's a sharpshooter and tinkerer and inventor, and uh, despite his cold exterior, is cold all the way through, to be honest. It's just <laughs> chilly. <laughs> Lies. He sure Ice. is. <laughs> and we have our very special, lovely guest, who I've been just loving getting to know so far, Sung Jin An, the supervising director Woo! of The Legend of Vox Machina. Tell us about Woo! yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Sung Jin An. Um, I don't really have any natural talents, but I enjoy sitting on couch with cool people and talking about cartoons. What do you mean you don't have no, natural, natural talents? You are the supervising director of The Legend of Vox Machina. It took a lot of blood and swears to get here. <laughs> Bless my <laughs> <and> tears. <laughs> Well, we are so happy to have you, and we can't wait to hear all about your insight into this delightful show. Without further ado, let's jump into episode four of The Legend of Vox Machina, Shadows at the Gates. Uh, go. Hi, I love the pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a meta pigeon plushie. Oh, do that. Maybe I should will, do will that. It, will it make the sound when you squeeze it? Yeah, it would make me happy. Or just a couple little band-aids on it. Does it come pristine and you have to rough it up, or does it come pre-roughed up? It just I comes would with a pack of band-aids. I would think pre-roughed up, but I, oh, yeah. that's so cute! Right, little Velcro band-aids! Oh. Oh what if we just released, like, bandages with little meta pigeons on them? <laughs> oh! I'm brainstorming with you guys about merch items. Right now, live, mm -hmm. on stream. This is literally how it happens. <laughs> this is how it happens. There's, there's usually... Can they just be, like, face band-aids, specifically just for face, for, like, cool... Like, oh, just to look really cool? Why like, not? you don't actually want to put them over a cut. It really no, no, like, how it works. no one's face should ever get like, damaged, <laughs> but just put it as what a if, fashion statement. Who, you know? What if you saw this? And then six months later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we can't joke about things here. <laughs> we are really careful these days. <laughs> Somebody, there, there's a series of people out in the distance right now who will just slowly write it down and then it'll be in our... Oh yeah, I heard some pencil scratching in the distance yeah. as we were talking about those band-aids. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, let's get off of band-aids and let's get on to some questions, All if right. you guys don't mind. Well, first up, just like last episode of The Watch Party, we have some really cool uh, concept art of characters and we are gonna start off with Percy and with Allison. Oh yes, let's yes. take a look. I just we? want to know what was the process for creating Percy for The Legend of Vox Machina? I mean, other than he had to be very pretty. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Succeeded. <laughs> I, I mean, it was a lot of fun and honestly, I, I will say that the design department hit hit him very quickly and it was not a, a uh, terribly difficult process it, where it's just refined but clearly has been away from money for a while. Um, the gun design took took quite a while, mm -hmm. but I remember we workshopping that for a while. Yeah, of just like, just uh, there was a lot of like, no, even uh, like even stupider, <laughs> <laughs> something that clearly doesn't work like right. five out of six times, yeah. like something that just breaks all the time. But yeah, thankfully, you guys like really understood uh, the the mechanism, so it was not hard to communicate, um, especially with the um, when we get to bad news with the the. Uh, um, lens system. Mm. I'm really glad that got used. As a, I think that yeah, that's all credit to Arthur, who's the art director. Like just he 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 was like a critter from before, and I think he was it was just like when he got to talk to you and you guys were brainstorming, uh, you know, Percy's gun and such. I could always I could just tell the glimmers that he's in Dreamland, and he really <laughs> he really worked it, engineered it. Like he, I'm sure he, he even did like schematic drawings of how it like breaks apart, and reassembles. Oh, and, and sent it to me. I'm like, and I was like, this is actually one of the best representations of these guns I've ever seen. I mean, like I even remember having a conversation with some guy on the internet years ago who was like, I make antique, I refurbish antique guns. Mm. Explain to me what they are, and I did. And he was like, 
those are stupid and wouldn't work well. I'm like, I, I, I know, they don't. <laughs> they break the all the time. It's, it's the first one. I mean, it's yeah, really bad. Problems. There's a reason there's only one. Well, now that you have schematics, uh, how long until you have a functioning version? They, will, they, by their very nature, are so bad that they don't. They will never work. <laughs> well, but yay, yay, probably wheel for locks. the best. Wheel locks are great. Probably for the best. Yeah, um, we, they blow up. Can we talk the, about the the art, the original concept art that we just saw go by, which is beautiful? But man, I love where we landed eventually because that art, as beautiful as it is, is very like there's so much panache to it and it's yeah it just doesn't feel like percy that's, right that's but the much final later on it's like, much more like, elegant and reserved and it's yeah. just so dapper and perfect yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah with like the gold and the the chain was definitely a, a point of discussion because <laughs> we a lot of people like the statement of the chain but chain's also one of the things that's like really difficult to pull off animation consistently mm. so yeah you definitely see that like liam nailed it on the head like you see the evolution of like a lot of panache and then the final version is more like more streamlined uh, for animation sake, but also just kind of like where he is in the story. He, yeah, right? he doesn't want to necessarily be noticed. He still wants to be who he is, but he doesn't necessarily, he doesn't want to like stand yeah. out. With the coat off, the shirt and vest. I yeah. know. Ugh. I like that he has gloves on as well. You know, yes. like the coat comes off, but the gloves it's still. It's kind of like, what are you gonna <laughs> do? <laughs> it's a filthy world. <laughs> oh my, what are you gonna do with those gloves? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, all right, let's, um. Well, move on before this gets out of hand. Laura, <laughs> this isn't really moving on to anything less sexy. <laughs> Laura, can you walk us through your uh, exploration of how you created Vex? Mm. Uh, wait, in, in like game game? Or no, 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 no. Like the, this, this, this animated Legend of um, Vex. Conversation. Sure, I mean, you know, I wanted her to uh, obviously be sexy and hot. That was like, yes. and I've said Double it before, word. like that is my, my one describer of her when is we were hot? originally creating the characters. <laughs> I'm like, just make her hot. Um, and that's what I want, obviously, but I wanted Vex to seem like, you know, she is kind of um, conservative at the same time, you know, um, and she's able to use her her figure and her, you know, her looks to her advantage when she wants to. So I didn't want it to be present at all times. Um, it's something that she can change as needed. And the so quiver was a, the quiver was a, I know we had a lot of talks about the quiver yeah. as well because it's tricky. It was weird to balance functional versus aesthetic, you know, qualities. So, realistically, where her quiver is currently placed, it's not tactically the best position to pull your arrow. Technically, the waist is. Yeah, but visually, How do you, it, you it animate that. Better. Yeah, yeah, it, it animates better and visually looks better. So we had to take that leap of like, kind of like cheating logic, just for the sake of like the animation and the visuals. Folding arrow. I remember the folding yes. arrow being. Folding yes. arrows. Yeah. I feel like those wouldn't fly very well. <laughs> it's a little bit like stage combat. It's not ultimately realistic, but it l seems that way. <laughs> that's yeah. fair, that's fair. Mm -hmm. And of course, last but not least, let's chat about Vax. Mm. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I think the first thing that I wanted to dial in when I was seeing early stuff is it's always been important to me that he be uh, lanky. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two lanky heroes in this group. Um, I think the first round that came back, he was sort of like broader, broader in the shoulder area, and I wanted him spelted up a bit. Here we go. Um, we got this undercut version of Vax. Which is hot. Very yeah. hot. It is. Yeah. It's it is. I like this yeah. tangled up version of Simon, too. No, he's on yeah. timeout. Oh. <laughs> he you might not be able to get unstuck. <laughs> um, but I wanted to keep him uh, lanky and spry, and then also I'm, I'm glad that we got like his face I don't know, I feel like the sneaky guys in, in fantasy are often sort of these, um, they have, I don't know, they have a look, and I wanted to make sure that he has a boyishness that he never yeah, loses. Yeah, we always talked about that, like he had like almost an innocence about mm -hmm. his face, you know? Yeah. yeah. I wanted to go against the grain. Um, and then we also had plenty of talks about, I don't know if we have this here or not, but dagger placement. Like there's three daggers, mm -hmm. are they all going on the back, are they going on the that front? That's a complex, yeah. yeah. Again, balancing like, What's what makes sense for combat, like mm -hmm. tactically, versus like aesthetic for drawing and animation and such. Right. Um, I think the twins were interesting. I have a fond memory because Phil, who did the initial design passes, because of the nature of the characters, he lowered them up with belts. They had so many. Oh, belts. that's right, Vex yeah. had a ton. So many, and I was like, I was like, bro, we can't track that many. Like, <laughs> this is a Final Fantasy. Like, we gotta yeah. stop. <laughs> um, and, and then they never let me li let me live it down for the rest of the year. Every time we have design they're like, oh, careful, so I'm just kind of get rid of all the belts, like get all the belts <laughs> off, like. <laughs> yeah, I'll just uh, put so many belts on, I'll take so many off. I'm yeah. 
But sneaky guys and belts, those go hand in yeah, hand, I understand. Do. Lots you of daggers, lots of belts. Don't want your pants falling down at the wrong moment. It'd be terrible. That and ruin the mission. You and one of your belts, belts is already a snake. Of... Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're losing a belt. Yeah, that's not being used for anything other than Other than being a snake. Yeah. <laughs> so you need some other belts to hold up your bits and bobs, and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I get it. Well, the other belt's busy doing other things. Uh, I've got belts for my belts. Those belts could be worms. Yeah. We don't oh my know. God, what if Simon like. had a little belt on? That would be Aww. so cute. Oh. Can we put couple that in later? Is it too late to put add? Put belts on Simon. Can we put belts on Simon? <laughs> and a pimp chain. We'll get to it. Well, <laughs> I'm like mildly getting PTSD right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're scarring. Oof. We're scarring, Sunjin. No, we can't do that. But how about this? I'll fix it. I have a question for you. Okay. We're gonna take away the belts. No cool. belts. Cool. Um, Shadow at the Gates is paced almost kind of like a mini horror movie. Emphasis on the horror. Um, obviously, a lot from Campaign One was drawn upon, but were there any other inspirations that you and your crew drew upon? I think I may know one, but I want to hear it from your mouth. Yeah, I mean, I, I credit really goes to Young Heller because he he's definitely like our metal horror guy, and so he he definitely brought to the table of like, hey, I get where we're trying to go with the story, but how do we crank it even more? <laughs> like, how do we get more metal? Um, I can't recall like specific references. Like he's the one that really like set the bone structure, and then all the Boris added, added on top, connected dots. Um, but yeah, kind of just what I was saying during the watch party too, just like we just knew going in, there was a daunting task. Like for, to us, at least personally in our careers, and as, just as artists, like to do true horror like that is it was uh, a very hard task to kind of do. But I, I, yeah. We're just super happy with how it came out, essentially. Um, we should check out how creepy those wraiths yes, are. Yes, yeah. um, and I would, if you have any insight mm. into how these wraiths were developed, I know wraith is a very common mm. enemy creature that we see in lots of different fantasy horrors, but you guys really found your own voice mm. with yeah, these. That outfit, right? I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a picture of Talison when he, you know, like 1,500 years yeah, that's, ago. That's my prom photo. Yeah. Right yeah. So yeah, this was, this was actually a very uh, challenging task in the design phase because oh. we had to create, create our own versions of these like demonic, creatures, you know, ne necrotic creatures. So like that first image was kind of like uh, what I sketched up on the side and like a board meeting and stuff. And then the second image was the initial lineup that Phil Barasa did. Mm. And we essentially like elements of both. So the final version that you see in the show is kind of like just continually workshop between the two take pieces of that and just kind of like uh, fuse it together. And then the fi I think the finishing touch was like all like the um, the red like ichor or tar just yeah the black ichor coming yeah. out yeah. like I remember I had a meeting with uh, our like supervising director of animation he just like man those rays are really hard to animate because <laughs> like you just added so much there's so much going on just to keep because uh, for that one we definitely prioritize like like dramatic effect over economy of animation it was one of those. Rare times where like we know this is gonna be hard to animate, but it's worth it. Like mm. the amount of stuff that we added just for the details, you know. Um, this may be a spoiler for the next episode, but there's a moment in the next episode and the rates in this episode that remind me a lot of like Junji Ito, like classic Japanese horror. Mm. And I just feel like that's not something that you see in a lot of animation that isn't just you know straight up mm. anime horror. And I think that that's what transcended it. At least for me when I was watching it, and a lot of people out there will agree that. You know, if you're watching something scary, you don't expect to see such visceral yeah. creepiness. I don't know, I just, props, I guess, is where I'm going with this, no, to that, that, really breaking the boundaries of animated they're horror. They're so fast and they don't give a shit they about don't give gravity. Shit. They're all over the place. Uh, yeah. I think that's one of the um, delicate balances. And a challenge is like, we know we're working in an animation medium, mm -hmm. but when we're like thinking and visualizing the sequences, we we kind of just kind of almost like approach it in a live action way. Mm. Like, kind of just at a certain point disregard that we're in animation land and just go for the chill like impact and like language to the audience, you know? It's just cinema essentially. Mm. It's not live action, it's not 2D, it's cinema, it's storytelling, trying to uh, get that connection with the audience, make them feel uncomfortable when we want them to, make them cry when we want them to. Uh, and then all the animation stuff kind of comes after that once we find the right bones. Well, uh, we have a question from the good old folks at home who are watching, oh. from the chat, from the viewers. Um, we're live. This is for everyone. Mm. Uh, somebody out there said uh, they didn't realize that any of the recording happened before COVID. 
What was it like making that transition to the home setups? Oh, well, it was hard. Yeah, but I, I mean, hard in a way. I just mean right? saying goodbye. I, I yeah. mean, like doing it, we all know how to do that. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're good at the work, but we were so, you know, so much went into the moment of coming together mm -hmm. in a circle to God, we were together. so excited in those first couple of episodes of all of us being in that room together and it, like seeing each other behind the mic because it it was real magic. Yeah, so glad it happened at all. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It definitely it definitely hurt. It was not it was not it was not what I'm so happy that we are who we are that we could go into those separate rooms and definitely pull off what we did. Which I I I don't know if it, um, not to talk us up or anything, but. I don't know if everybody could have done that. And we were very lucky to have the right people to make that happen, yeah. and the right director, and the right uh, people who are used to working in a vacuum. And we're in a time when we are, that we have the capability of like Zoom, you know? Mm -hmm. So in situations like that, that conversation between Vex and Vax, you know, that we were able to be on the phone call together. So even though we were in our mm -hmm. own individual home setups, we were recording at the same time, still. I just couldn't, you know, make eye contact with Liam, but it still felt like yeah, he was sitting next to me. It's we can, different. We can sense each other like bats. Yeah. I think you mean like twins? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they actually twins. screech in a very high pitch. Location. Location. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 that Laura, makes sense. Laura is in Los Angeles at any given time. <laughs> it's kind of uncomfortable. Like down to, down to the exact street where you are and like what you're doing. Mm. You pooping? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know what? I think on that note, it's time for the next yeah. episode of The Legend of Vox Machina. Thank you, twin pooping bats. So let's jump into episode five of The Legend of Vox Machina, Fate's Journey. Go. Oof. Oh. Oh. That's when we knew Matt wasn't fucking around. And this around. damn creaking. Oh. Also, the creaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really a brilliant. Actual way chills. Mm -hmm. Way to hold it. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I love about the show is like, you guys, there's so much, so much like great stuff already there. And it's like, well, how do we take that mm. great stuff and just uh, really maximize, like, really make the audience feel like, mm. take for a roller coaster ride, right? I mean, oh, you and... are a Vox Machina in this moment. You're just standing in the silence, letting it, the, the truth sink yeah. in, and you're hearing that. Mm -hmm. It's an unbelievable choice. It reminded me of like the end of Black Mirror episodes where it's just a black screen. So you see just, your yeah. your jaw dropping in the screen the in front of you. Mm -hmm. That was very this moment of you're just realizing like, oh, those are dead. Sit like the oh my those are villagers that they hung yeah. and the little details welcome. like the antlers being nailed in mm. too. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. Yeah. Character team really nailed that one. Or the fact <laughs> that there were two gnomes in the party, so they took two children. Yeah. 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 Mm. Not cool. Yeah. Not not cool. I mean, not I cool, Briarwoods. Dude, yeah. I'm like, it's uh, oh. it's it's mm. it's I it's remember it's like in the game as he was describing each person on the tree and all of us slowly coming to the realization of what it was. Oh. And it's, okay. ugh. Can I talk about that for a moment? Yeah, no, like, please. Uh, before I, I worked on this, I wasn't a critter. I didn't really know much about this world and these characters. And um, even as the show started, like, I, I started learning more about it, but I actually hesitated from going and watching things because I kind of wanted to <laughs> have a, a fresh take on these stories that you guys are recreating, right? Yeah. Um, so I didn't know the context of how heavy that moment was from the campaign until now when I'm seeing all the fans like talk about it and show like side by side. Cause side videos. by side, it's been really. So I'm getting like a double hit like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like, like for not down. having having watched it, like you nailed it. I mean, That's... yeah, I mean like, the board team and I, we were just like, we just wanted to like to tell a very impactful story, which that was our main priority. But yeah, like the context of it, I'm getting like a reverse. It, it like, was the <laughs> moment in that game where everything changed. Yeah. 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 Everything changed then. It was, it was. Nothing was safe anymore. And they were never happy again. <laughs> <laughs> it took so, a while. Suddenly I thought end. back to that random comment that Matt made about six weeks beforehand going, any changes you want to make to your backstory, you know, you should probably just just finish it up if there's anything you're missing, because I'm I really I just want to have everything in a row. I'm like, ah. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. And then oh no. I'm oh, first wow. apparently. <laughs> oh boy. Oh wow. Why am I going first? <laughs> um well, 
on that heavy note, shall we move on to some Q&A? Yeah. Is that good mm. with everyone? Let's get some bat questions. Yeah. This is for the twins. <laughs> um, this is the first uh, just kidding. That's I can't read. This is for Laura and Talison. Oh. oh, not for the twins. Sorry. That is the second question. This is the first episode where we were seeing some Vex and Percy chemistry a mm-hmm. little bit bubble up. So can you talk to us about that? And what do they see in each other? She's hot. He's hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I will say she's at that point the only person he actually thinks is another adult. He has a very, yeah, I, he, he does think he's the only adult in the room all the time. You're the only other person that I believe at that point that he actually thinks is a mature human being. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, your, your brother is an idiot and everybody else is just goofing off. Obviously. And Keyleth, <laughs> Keyleth uh, you know, she's, she, 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 comes, she comes from a from She's like age, a little she's sister. Kind of, she's she's like... very little sister. She's mm-hmm. not really, you know, she's not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the, you're the only other person I can talk to, like an actual human being. And she's hot. Enough. And she's so hot. Yeah. God. That's oh. fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. But he's hot. And he's very hot. He's so hot. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I just, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, you see it in this, that like Percy has so much depth. Um, and I think Vex is very interested in seeing what he's hiding because mm. it's obvious that there's more that he's not revealing and that is mm-hmm. incredibly enticing to her. Mysteries. You're, you're, you're very kind to me when I'm being terrible all the time, I will say like that. Like Vex's character is like, why don't you just calm down? And mm. Maybe maybe s- slow it down a little bit where, where you know, Vex is like, what the? What are you doing? <laughs> oh. There was a gun in my face, man. <laughs> there, there. Uh, so for Liam, same mm. question. Mm. We we're seeing Vax catch a little bit of some some woos for the Keyleth. Um, when you were working <laughs> with the writers on how to introduce that, what was going through your head as he takes a long sip oh, of his boy. drink? Uh, <laughs> well, it's a it, it's wrapped up in sort of how we've had to condense. So much. Yeah. Um, in the original game, things were staggered by quite a bit, and they're going to happen much closer together, just because they need to, because mm. we've squished everything down. So, like, you're already seeing the glimmer between them as uh, Vax and Keyleth are more obvious in in yeah. Ours potential. is far more like subtle right now, right? For sure. Yeah. Um, and we've lost the whole, we, like we've jumped in, we've, we've sort of like shaved away the first 30 games that we played. So we're coming in later. Mm. Right. And so it was like, there was definitely trying to figure out like, well, what can you, what, where are you landing and how much are you doing if you're coming in, jumping past a bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. but an audience is seeing it for the first time. Mm. So there, there has been a lot of, gosh, I don't want to get too deep into it because mm. so much yeah. yet to come, but yeah. there was a lot of fine tuning, like the timing of it, where the two of them, like like uh, the two different relationships, almost like uh, those games at the fair where you're squirting water and you make the horses go down mm-hmm. the track. You're like, where are they each on their track? Yeah. Um, so so just like dialing in where and when and how is a big part of it. Boy, romances. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come a long way. Airships, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this time for the twins up there. Oh. Uh, we got some Vex and Vax backstory in episodes one and two, but in episode four and five, we really get to see Vex and Vax's sibling dynamic, particularly when Vex picks up on Vax's feelings for Keyleth. For the folks at home who maybe aren't as familiar with the twins, talk to us about what's going on there. Why is Vex so suspicious of Vax's feelings mm. for Keyleth? What's with the cold shoulder? What's with the doubt? Right, right, right. I sort of like mentioned it in the as we were watching, but. Uh, Vex and Vax grew up having continually losing everything in their life that is important to them in various ways. And um, the only constant throughout their life was each other. Mm. Um, And they've always relied on each other. They've always had each other's back. And so in these moments of seeing, oh, there is a genuine interest there, because I'm I'm sure in, in in their past, they've had moments of, you know, He's gonna go off and do something. She's gonna go off and do something. Like yeah, they both had dalliances. Yeah, obviously. But um, like this is the first time she's seeing like this vulnerability with him with somebody else, and like, oh shit! Like I know where this could go, and the terror of being left behind in those moments comes out for Vex as 
cold shoulder shittiness, basically. Like, I'm gonna push away the thing that is putting me at risk. Um, so she's extra terrible to Keyleth in those moments because she's mm -hmm. the thing that's coming between her and the most important thing in her life. I mean, that's a very honest emotion to feel. I feel like none of us here in this room are perfect. We've all acted a little shittily towards something that oh, sure. deeply scares us. And I just, I genuinely love that kind of representation of the shittier sides of us. It's like nobody's gonna be like, oh my gosh, yes, thank you, beautiful person who may take my brother away right. from me. I that's mean, all I've had. Yeah, it'd like, be great if we could all be like the perfect person all the time, but right. we're not. And no, I think that's what makes yeah. these characters relatable, right? Mm -hmm. are, are there flaws? And and he gets it too. Like he knows exactly mm. why she's totally. responding the way she is. It, and so he's trying to like navigate and make sure that she feels supported and loved and, and not abandoned, which is something that the two of them struggle with while mm -hmm. also trying to be like, well, but I can, I, we sh we're, we're supposed to grow up and we're supposed to live and but I'm still, you know, it's just yeah. a hard, hard little needle to thread. It's awful, yeah. yeah. Kind of. And it's, it's, it's bad because at the same time, you know, and we're just going down this like path of twins right now, but <laughs> like Vex like adores Keyleth. Mm. Like she's adorable. She's powerful and cute at the same fucking time. She's amazing. Yeah. She's an amazing. And she talks to trees. What's better? Yeah, like what's better than that? Right? So it's like, I'm forcing myself to really dislike you right now. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's kind of like in The Lion King where Nala comes back and Timon and Pumbaa are really pissed about it. Exactly. And they sing, can you feel the love tonight? Exactly. You know? We've had, you know? We've had long talks about Timon oh, yeah. and Pumbaa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. I, I, it's really the base. Can we talk about how The Lion King is integral to your backstory <laughs> and how, honestly, if you really look deeply at it, that's... I wonder how many times we could find. <laughs> I want to do the... I want to. Dear do Critters the... out there, <laughs> if you can equate The Lion King to Vex and Vax as much as physically possible. Timon and Pumbaa specifically. Timon and Pumbaa specifically. Get back to us. <sighs> Nathan Lane and I went to the same high school. The threads go deep. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds Boom! true. Inception noise. Yeah, all right. true. Wait, is that true? Yep. That sounds true. Not at the same time. Oh. But the same high school. Now, at the same time, would have come back with some yeah, yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. stories. Good Darn. actor. Mm -hmm. Very good actor. So were you. Sometimes. That's, he was talking about himself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Lane, meh. Sometimes. It's all right. Yeah. Sung Jin. Yes. There is a bug. Get him. No, Get no, I don't want to murder on live television. We've murdered so many bugs on stream. Well, I won't be one I of those people, again. mainly because I have bad reflexes. Um, this episode has an incredible chase scene, and I want you to walk us through how you go about directing a scene like this, but before you answer, yes. let's take a look at a little animatic, shall we? Ooh. They're not the only ones. It's God Scanlan. We have no choice. I am not dying to save that nerve. Get me closer. <laughs> Shoot for his head. Nick. Dick. Come on, Vex. No one breaks balls better than you. He's not wrong. You missed. <laughs> Let go of the book, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> The horse. <laughs> the the door. Dog horse. and the horse. Um. They got skewered. The horse was just a wire frame, though. Okay. Didn't I? Okay, as long as you're sure. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, chase sequences by nature. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> the pain in your voice right now. <laughs> Tamir Um The, uh, yeah, chase sequences are, are challenging because it's that constant sense of momentum that you have to keep tracking in as everyone sees and knows. Animation is like by frame, you know, like catered each frame. So uh, we just knew like, we have to always keep track of like, okay, are we keeping track of the momentum? How is the, how is the speed of the environment going? Uh, we can, one thing we're trying to be wary of is like the endless runway thing of like, depending on how we shoot it, will it feel like we're just on like this endless runway for too long, mm. you know? It's a Scooby Doo um, shot. Yeah. The same hallway. Yeah. So we have to find that right balance. Um, in the animatic, I, I saw like a harmony of like a lot of art. Like it was originally, um, Shine did the original boards, and then Alicia and Revision, I saw some Marvin poses um, just added on top of it. Um, so like ultimately, yeah, that. 
approaching the chase, like I think Shinde really set the groundworks of like, like how long we're gonna stay on these certain angles and getting giving off that sense of speed. And oh boy, I remember when she was boarding that too. There was there was like one time I was like, are you okay, girl? Because like uh, <laughs> like she went, she was like studying like how like. The, the wolves will be running and the horses galloping. Oh, bad. And like, mm, and like so bad. one time I saw her on her Instagram post, like she just did like this horse drawing. All I saw her, and all I said was just horses, dot, dot, dot. And I was like, are you Aww. okay? Like, you, you need to talk <laughs> a little bit? <laughs> um, are, you, but, are you breaking down need a little bit? bit? Yeah, <laughs> but she really, you know, she really set the bone structure of that chase sequence. And then um, it's a little favorite to me. I was like, hey, Alicia, like, I, I, because Alicia did that sequence of the when the wolf fell off the cliff mm. and also the horses. Originally, the horses <laughs> might have made it out alive. But I was like, hey, Alicia, could you um, add a little cherry on top for, the, we just need that last cherry for the, the end of the chase sequence there. And uh, she, yeah, so she did some beautiful illustrations there of like how uh, that zombie wolf in the foreground and then the, the, the secondary fall in the back, so. No, in the my mind. The horses are dead just... because of you? Yeah. Yes. Are you familiar <laughs> with the play Equus? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Okay, I'm going to quickly pivot. Hey, um, the control room, want to throw up some art of those cool carriages and doggos so we don't have to think about Equus? Thank you. Woo, those are pretty. Those are pretty. Those are actually really, really pretty. Mm. I like Grog for scale. Yeah. Look at those fully living horses. Beautiful. So, yeah, we have so to living. We had to, like, make the designer, and I think Howard did the initial passes on mm. these wagons. We had to like strategically decide on a design level, like the canopy, how much, because we knew in wide shots, it's, it's very hard to track characters in a wagon when it's moving in wide shots. Mm. So we intentionally did have like this torn canopy motif so that we can um, kind of like cheat or set up in like wide or medium shots, like be able to hide what's going on inside and then cut inside to show it in a different kind of a setup. Um, but yeah, there's just some killer um, designs and smart Christ, moves made. Everything. Yeah. yeah. We had, you know, that's kind of how, how we have to roll the animation for sure. Ooh, look at those borf borfs. Yes. Um, a fun story about these wolves. This is part of like the last iteration uh, of that we ended up with, like, because we definitely, mm. I think even from the script, it was meant to be more like outlandish, necrotic, just creatures, not even like recognizable. Yeah, like these. Mm. Mm. These were like, uh, like almost like hodgepodge. Like, what if Delilah mixed different things oh, together? Yeah, look at that mm. one with the skull on its foot. Yeah. Skull. Yeah. And. Um, we ultimately had to stray away from that because we knew it either had to be animated in 2D or animated in CG. And um, trying to animate even weirder anatomy <laughs> is like another like hump to kind of overcome. So we're like, how about we go a little tradish uh, <laughs> with the four legs, right. but the the twist was like like the wolf leader had like that gaping open the head thing, you know? Yeah. Like, I did, I missed it. <laughs> missed it. So that was like how we reintroduced like like the plot twist of like okay how do we do do favor to Delilah like why would she send these creatures if they're not like super badass and super scary right so I mean getting impaled by a rock and then twisting your guts yeah. over and walking away is pretty badass on its own so ten out of ten there yeah and then turning your tongue gut spine into legs yeah 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 horrific. Yeah. Whoever decided that is truly fucked up in the mind, and I salute them. Cool, 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 yeah. cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, the honors go to you. Mm. Truly fucked up in the head, <laughs> and I salute you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about a question from the chat for all of you? you yeah. Ready? Mm. Bring it on. All right, this is for the cast. Um, how long did it take yourselves to believe that this was real? This was finally <laughs> happening. Still waiting for that to happen. Still fever dream. Oh. Seriously, though. Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah but like, you guys have posters in LA. Yeah. Yeah, that was. <sighs> you have five stars on Amazon Prime now. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> no. What? No, no. That's all of them. No. No. That's all of them. No, it, it feels yeah. it feels <laughs> unreal. No. Yeah. It feels unreal. Like at the end of the day, we go home and we, you know, sit down on our couch and just go what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Just no. And are very happy with it and proud of it and, mm. and thrilled that people love it. And, you know, that's all artists want is to put their all into a project that they love and then to have people enjoy it. Enjoy it. See it yeah. and like it. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. I feel very fortunate. Make people, you know, forget about life for just a little bit of time. Also, people outside of just 
the Critterverse really love this show. Evidently, like, yeah. I have people who don't know anything about this, but know I vaguely do something sometimes connected to a role that might be critical, texting me going, I watched that show, it's like really good. Is this what you want me to start watching? I was like, I'm sorry, you went out of your own way to go watch The Legend of Vox Machina, first of all? Touched. <laughs> Second of all, yes, do you have a spare 700 hours to start watching all of their campaigns? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's where you begin. But it's just really cool to have people that have never even heard of a dice or the fact that it's 20 sided get really into the show. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, That's so awesome. Cool. The ability to My open favorite. up the story to uh, an entirely new audience is, is so exciting. That's awesome. That was always a delicate balance, I think, we all kept in mind, even from script phase, yeah. even those initial meetings, because we knew that there was a, a big critter community, but we also wanted to be accessible and expand to just new people. Mm. Yeah. That so, was yeah. constantly uh, on, on our minds when going over the scripts and going through drafts. I, I'd like look at every line and be like, this only makes sense if I've watched the game. Mm. We need to, or, or vice versa. And, and you know, of course what we wanted was for anyone to be able to plunk down and, and get wrapped up in it. But at the same time, you know, reward people mm -hmm. right. or like excite people that do know the story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because there's nothing better than if you've like read the books of something and you see it, you know, in motion. You're like, yes, I know that. I I understand that reference. You know, it's it's so exciting. I, I just want people's mom to just be like, oh, I love that Keyleth. And like five years I've been watching this show, and now you know who Keyleth is. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There you. That that is our gift. Is now your mom knows who Keyleth is. You know. I'm sorry, your mom had to watch yeah, that two-headed yeah, woman being boned by it. Scanlan. <laughs> true. True. She has seen terrible things. But I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are super justified that all of their friends, family, etc., are finally watching what they've loved for years and being like, you know what? It's actually pretty good. I get yeah. it now. <laughs> my 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 parents watch the animated series. Aww. They they watched campaign two of our show. They started watching during campaign two, which just shocked me mm. to begin with. But yeah, my mom, I was talking to her the other day and she's like, it's really good, Laura. So these are the, those Vox Machina characters? <laughs> I just <laughs> love it, I just love it. That's so wholesome. Yeah. I had that with my father-in-law too. He uh, contacted my wife Amy and was like, I, I, I just clicked on a thing on Amazon and I was watching this animated show and it's Liam's thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I like that it was unprompted too. He just clicked on yeah, something on Amazon like, Prime and it happened to be it's great. the Vox Machina. It's so good. Looking on random cartoons, man. Mm. Look at that. You guys ever go like, but just don't watch episode four. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just don't do it. Well, yeah. I don't tell my mom all the parts that I voiced outside of X so that she doesn't like have that in her brain, you know? Yeah. That's smart. You know what the thing that tipped him off was too? He didn't like recognize recognize my voice or anything. He was watching on an iPad. You know how you tap on the screen and it shows you the actors uh, in? Yeah. He saw Matt Mercy and he went, I had Thanksgiving dinner with them once. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> That's so amazing. Um, I would love to get into the next episode. Um, our teleprompter went blue screen. So I know that there's, a, there's some stuff that I have to say before we watch the next episode. Oh, I can try, just like I kind of know the airplane, uh, you know, vamp in the beginning from memory, I could try to do that. But we're gonna we sneak in an extra question I mean, while we get yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. going. That would probably be smart. Or I can say, welcome to Vox Machina Airlines. <laughs> keep all keep hands all and hands feet and feet inside. inside the plane at all times. No, we're gonna let's. I know we talked about it a little bit before mm. before we even started the official Q and A. But can we talk a little bit about the Sun Tree moment just a little bit more? Mm. I'm sorry to bring it up. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. Um, but if for people out there who hadn't seen Campaign One, can you compare your reactions in the moment at the table to re your reactions first watching this animated? Can I just interrupt to say I believe I killed the fly? Did you really? Did you get it? You did not really. It's one of these. No, it's little, right there. Even it's a right, nope. Well, no. I killed. Yeah, maybe there were two because you did get one on your okay. hand. Okay. Like That's little, why it seemed so. Everywhere. I did a little Caleb Widogas little twirl, and there was a dead bug in the hands. So. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. we, now you have to kill its brother. I mean, it, it's purely horrifying. It was yeah. Beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That was wonderful. Yeah, I, I remember going home that night after the game and like thinking about the visual of it, thinking about that moment, like as I was trying to go to sleep mm. at night and and then getting to see it, uh, you know, in 
motion. Mm. Yeah. Um, just kind of brought back all of the, all of the horror mm -hmm. um, of the realization. I think for the audience, uh, you know, it's very obvious from the get-go that this is not a show for, for kids, but it's the most extreme moment in the, in the show where, where the audience is going, this is not what I signed up for. I didn't understand mm. that they were going to go to places like this. Um, you know, even beyond our horror movie aspects of episode four, it's just, I mean, it's a deep cut. Yeah. Well, it's, it's it, and even in the original game, it was such a, a good prelude so that to, to kind of like put it out there of like, are you okay? You can, you can get off the, you can get off the ride still. Mm. Uh, this is, this is kind of what's ahead. It's a, it was a very good, uh, uh, sign of, of the darkness to come. Oh, we were yeah. all fascinated. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, so are you guys ready for the final episode? <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yes. Without further ado, the sixth episode of The Legend of Vox Machina, Spark of Rebellion. Spark. Spark Smash of that nipple button. <laughs> Smash <laughs> that nipple button. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. yep. Look at that town. Yep. That's sad. Yeah. That's my town. <laughs> that's sad. That's sad. Again, gorgeous. I don't want to live there, there, actually. It, it's, mm -mm. I'll, I'll tell you, it's very nice. There's a lot. There's mm -hmm. a very good uh, market district. Mm -hmm. There's beautiful trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. property is very inexpensive. You know, I would say <laughs> that a pile of rubble would be very inexpensive, but, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Is. No? <laughs> Maybe um, once it's fixed up a little bit, yeah, we, I'll come visit. But I mean, you know, it's you know, gotta know. get in before the gentrification. You know what? That's fair. I will take. Uh, do you, is, is there any waterfront property? <laughs> no, there, there, no. there is actually. There, there is, there is actually some, some ocean, but it's a bit of a bit of a hike, actually. Oh. You know, I believe. I'll take some tree front North. property. Then. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, that. it's easier to do. We'll get some tree front Very property easy. in at the ground floor. You know, once the tree comes back to life, everything will be fine. You know, sure. get some greenery I, in is there. Is it going to come back to life though? Oh, I don't know. Like, no. we've, it's all in the the new guide. The tree can get oh, you to the true. ocean, yeah, however. True. See, now that's easy transportation. I'll take a house. You've convinced me. I can do it. I'll also take a house. <laughs> You've sold me. Give me a house. Yeah. Yeah. If we're just giving out houses. Yes. Very nice bakery. There's a lot. There's a lot. Does it come with CG horses? Um. No, sadly, sadly, oh. no horses. They were just too expensive. It's a very <laughs> safe city. Uh, yes, a very that was safe city where well. nothing bad ever yes. happens. Ever, nothing bad ever happens. Everything's fine. Every <laughs> yes, I can tell by the tr everything burned to the ground. Yeah. Everything is fine. Well, are you guys ready for a last round of questions Aww. of the night? Yeah. Final round. I know. All right, question for mm. the man of the evening, Talison. Oh God. Is it Percy of the evening? Yeah. Jafe? Taliesin Jafe? Taliesin Jafe? Taliesin Jafe? Taliesin Jafe? Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> My God. Um, for the folks at home who are yeah. just getting into Vox Machina, it is obvious that season one leans into Percy's backstory yes. a fair amount. True. Um, talk us through what it was like having Percy be a focal point for this first season. Um, well, God, now I have to stop doing the accent because I'm going to fuck it up. I mean, you don't, have to, you don't there. have to Too stop. Late. Shit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, it, it was it was disconcerting even the first time we did it in the in the campaign. Um, wow, this takes me back. Uh, I I'm not entirely sure why uh, Matt decided that I was going to be the first, but but he uh, he dragged us through that horror state, and now um, having the opportunity, there we are, uh, to. <laughs> Percy. It is. It's Percy's just things. coming out. Hey? God, <laughs> dreamed I was from California. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was. It's. It's fascinating considering that like the story of this character was originally just something I'd just written up before I'd even play the game, put it aside, and then was like, oh, this will be a fun backstory. I've always wanted to play with this ridiculousness, and then, well, now we are. Designing uh, the Whitestone Keep, and I'm going. Oh, there's a little garden back there, and, uh, the, and this is the the market district. And oh wow, the tree is really big. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, tree, yeah. You put those amazing things on the top of the spires. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Look at that. Oh, there's Whitestone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. wow. Yep. That was another early shot that we got oh, in the beginning God. of it all. Yeah, that the we just iterations. We just stared at, dumbfounded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Whitestone. Oh, the throne room. I have I have so much ridiculous history written about up about this place, and it's just so strange to see it 
mm. function. This. Of course you learned the language of the angels in this house. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. so There's a very we nice know. library at one of the upper floors. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's true. Yeah. I'm like, we didn't even figure out where it's gonna be and stuff. And yeah, we, we did. We never, we never got to shoot it. it. Yeah. But like, Aww. but I, we know where it is. Yeah, we know where it is. Yeah. You never know. It could come up. And it, there is a little, there's a little secret hatch, and there's a whole thing. It's great. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that. I mean, like you were saying earlier, all of you have been talking about it. These are characters that you dreamt up years and years ago. Who would have ever thought that there it is in a show, animated? All of your thoughts and dreams and ideas manifested, not just at a table, so but like strange. outside of your own body. Yeah. Is that wild? It is very, very oh. weird. <laughs> it's very weird. It's it's so incredibly personal mm. um, that, you know, like as we're even just like developing the the stories um, and, and writing the scripts, like it feels so personal seeing the lines on the page and you want the characters to uh, be showcased in the correct way because it feels like your heart is on that page, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'll admit, I'm still a little nervous about the the episodes to come of just how people are going to react to the uh, the inevitable end of this particular chunk of the story yeah. and mm -hmm. what people are going to think when they finally get to see where it's all headed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, do, I do remember a specific moment because before and early it was just words on pages. And then we had that first table read. I could just see all everyone yeah. wow. together, and you guys start reading each other's lines, and you felt the energy start building on top of each other. And I'm there with the with the directors and the board team. We're just kind of just watching on the outer edge of the room, and and uh, I think it wasn't until that moment you felt that energy. We're like, okay, these characters are like alive. Like mm -hmm. before, they were just words on papers. We're just like, okay, we gotta figure out this, this, this. But like, I think it was refreshing for us as artists just to see it in person, you know, before the pandemic and such, but it was really grateful to, ex to be able to experience that, you know? Absolutely. Read through was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm sure for, for you guys, yes, a table read is almost akin to a session without Matt. It's like a session without a DM, but then to see the storyboards, then to see the animatics, then to see it polished, then to see it on a platform. It's like, just literally, like you said, they came to life in front of your eyes. Just, I don't have a character in this show, and I'm like, this that's the coolest thing in the world, so I can't even imagine how it must feel to have your child yeah. be there on your screen. Up and walking. You. Yeah. yeah. Every second I was convinced, they were just gonna be like, nope, nope, okay, we've we're, got everything <laughs> you want, we're out now. <laughs> it, it is the most creatively thrilling and satisfying experience of my life. Yeah. Truly, yeah. Yeah. That's Everyone involved as well. Shout out, everybody, if you know an animator or a writer or a creative, go hug them. <laughs> go hug them right now. Tell them you're doing a good job. Hydrate and get some sleep. Yes. <laughs> Are you hydrated and getting sleep? More or less, so yes. Sometimes. <laughs> draw, me, draw, me, draw me a bear riding a horse, if you wouldn't. <laughs> if, if you could just go home, draw me a bear riding a horse. Um, drinking a beer. Drinking a beer in flowing water. So, uh, fun fact, actually. Um, <laughs> Trinket the bear yes. is actually an animation term, just a horse. Trinket is just a bigger, hairier, cuddlier horse because it still needs four legs to go around and do stuff. Yeah. I've got that. I, you take I, that back. Sorry. <laughs> I am fully aware of, of like the, <laughs> the love and hate relationship that the animators have with Trinket, right? Yeah. Because you know how wonderful he is. He is adorable. He's adorable. He's and at the same adorable. time, you just hate his guts. Yeah. 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 But he's adorable. Yeah. He's so adorable. there's he's that. Awesome. Awesome. Sam's Synergy, like Sam. Yeah. Sam's wow. I know. Sam, Sam's going to get away. Uh, <laughs> Sung Jin, I have another question for you. <laughs> uh, we spent a lot of time building up this reveal of Whitestone. Percy had this beautiful monologue about it. So how much work does it take to bring a location like this to life and then simultaneously fucking destroy it? Oh man, you know, honestly, um, from like the director's a storyteller, storyteller's point of view, uh, it's not, it wasn't that complex, but I think the true tragedy lies with the designers because they, they're the ones that really put in the effort, the work to build up the, the world and Whitestone because they, they, they have to design it all first engineer, think about all the nooks and crannies, and then they pass it to us when we start doing the storytelling. Um, 
So it's truly tragic for them too when they see it all dilapidated and destroyed. But I'll, I think they had fun with the two. Um, but um, yeah, it's you know it, it is truly like very design heavy to just to take this whole world from the campaign that you guys already visualized and like to physically like make it exist in front of our eyes, you know. So that's a, that's a feat in itself, essentially. Mm. And there was also art, as we saw in some of the episodes, of fully formed white stone, like pretty, mm -hmm. not Pass. burned down yeah. white stone, which must be triply painful to then solely animate it, burnt yeah. to a crisp. Nipply painful. Yes. Nipply painful, yes. Smashing. Yes. Abrasive. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of nipples, that's a horrible segue. What right. is a segue? Roll but it. what is it? What What's the question? So Vex. Ah, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Um, we I see. Mean, I have nipples too. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You know what? Speaking <laughs> of nipples, no. Um, we see Vex take on kind of a leadership role uh, a lot in this episode. So how much of that is Vex as a character, and how much of that is Laura as a player? Oh, I am not bossy. <laughs> in real life, I am pretty. I'm, am I bossy? Wow, well, Liam's. Am knows. I a bossy person? No, Liam's no. Knows. And I will no. say that um, <laughs> I don't think you were there this day. But in the big like writer summit that we did at the beginning, there was a day when a question was posed, like, "Is there a leader of Vox Mach?" And everyone was like, "No, no, no, no." And I said, "Well, well. <laughs> there isn't a leader." But Vex was always ex always made actionable, intelligent decisions and just drove things. So like no one would call her the leader and people would fuck off and do what they wanted anyway. Mm -hmm. But Laura is a very smart player and Vex was just like took the, the bull by the horns often. So I, I had said that day that like there isn't a leader, that's true, but there almost is and it's Vex. I like it. Good answer. Yes, I claim that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Oh yeah, that's that definitely that tracks. Uh, speaking we just had of good ideas and yeah. good ideas are good ideas. And, and Laura's good. good. Thanks, Nika. Yeah, the Laura. What are you doing after this? Uh, nothing. But... <laughs> Want to go get some margaritas? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> speaking cool. of leaders, um, <laughs> we finally got to meet. Archie, uh, the leader of the resistance in Whitestone, but he's not quite the Archie that we, or the critters may remember from campaign one. So could you guys all talk us through the process of making Archie a childhood friend of Percy versus the former chancellor for the Derulos? I mean, a, a lot of it was, is just, uh, and please chime in for this, is, mm. is just when you're looking at the hundreds of hours in front of you of, that you have to condense, 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 condense. Yeah. The big thing, the, like I don't want to say the easiest thing, but one of the ways you can really, really, really help yourself is if you can take a character you know you like and then let them do a bunch of things that other people, other characters. Yeah, combine that are, it with other. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. they can just kind of do everything. Ooh, art. Oh, hey. Hello. Yeah. Nice. All those are good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the question. Too big. <laughs> no. Never. No. Never. No. 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 But, it, it, yeah, it just seemed like yeah. the perfect fit. It, just adding to that. It, it really was about, so like we have all this time and we need to shrink it down and we need the group to go here for this and we need them to be over here at this time. And I, I'm trying to remember, but I believe it was just more conducive to have him be this kind of a figure to make sure that we could get the team mm. in the places we needed them to be. Mm. And it worked out for the best because like he's such, he's such a great design and Dominic sounds fucking great. Mm -hmm. And he wanted this like charismatic presence yeah. that, you know, people would follow, right? Mm -hmm. I think you nailed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just amazing. Nothing wrong with a hot dwarf. How about a question from the chat? Let's yeah. do it. Ready? All right. All right. This is for Sungjin and Taliesin. Ooh. All right, here we are. Dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> Couch bros. Couch bros. Couch bros. <laughs> there we are. Uh, so obviously, Percy has a lot of importance in the Briarwoods arc. But what was the most fun or interesting Percy moment to see come to life in animation? And what was the most challenging to get right? Oh, I mean, I'm, I say we only stick to things that have happened because there are things that have not happened yet that I would definitely have words about. Right, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, like, clearly that, at least what we just recently saw, Percy was that Percy and Stonefill. Like, that was, um, it, no, it wasn't really hard at all, but it was very, uh, it was very exciting to do because that's technically, like, 
Percy's first revenge, mm. you know, and we started incorporating like his relation and this, his gun, you know. Um, so that was definitely a very big like moment for Percy as we're developing this yeah. animated series. You, you only get a hint of it in episode three, and I love what, what happens in episode three, but it's really just that kind of, it, it kind of creeps in because it thinks it has a moment to, to get to the to the Briarwoods, and then by the time they're gone, it's just, it's just that temporary moment with Percy just yelling at everybody and then yelling at this poor kid and being awful. Yeah. But yeah. this is the first time it actually gets to eat. Yeah, so we actually show it, yeah, what what all those breadcrumb trails were about, you know, because, yeah, definitely teased it in episode three, and people were like, mm. I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 and then you, you kind of get a semblance of where Percy's heading by episode six. So. I feel like in episode three, Percy still has, like, plausible deniability. Oh, I'm, oh. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, That ain't going away. You know, like, he's a little angry, I guess. And then in this episode, it's like, oh. Oh. oh, 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 he's little, he's little fucked. He, he, he's a little he, fucked. He's not tracking this. No, <laughs> no. He's, no, no he, you know, not, not to, not to put too much of a British on it, but it's very, like, just repress, repress. <laughs> no, don't think about it. Yeah. We're fine. Poor guy. Everything's yeah. fine. I can fix him. <laughs> I can fix it. I can fix it. It's just so sad because Percy at his core, you know, I mean, you think about his, is who he was before the Briar Woods, yeah. and he was just such a, you know, before a little the lad. Yeah, the... before the self loathing. It's... Yeah, before the trauma. Before the trauma. A lot of things had to happen to make him the way he is now. Yeah. 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 It feels yeah. so good to like a bad character. Oh, just, yeah. I, I love him so much, and he's such a mess. Yeah. But at the same time, he's still such a integral and important part of this group, and I feel like Vox Machina wouldn't be the same without him, and he's changed them, and they've changed him, which mm -hmm. says Fully. so mm -hmm. much because of all that trauma. It's like, but Percy, deep down, still, I don't know, loves everybody. He, he, yes, he does. It's deep. He's such, he's such a mess. Percy but. at his core is still in his long johns with his butt flap. Hand. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, I've but, forgotten about that. Yeah. Thank you. Aren't Thank those you. the kind of characters that we just love so much? That they're just so tortured, but they're onesie so sweet? One, uh, onesie pajamas. In onesie pajamas, specifically. There's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> your next merch idea. Percy onesie pajamas. Oh, with a butt flap. With, with a butt, butt flap. flap. Yeah, you gotta have the butt flap. <laughs> yeah. But like all of the buttons are little guns. Oh, little bullets. Little bullets. Oh, little bullets. Yeah. 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 Cute. Hard to twist. Is there a way to happen, make no. the butt flap look like the barrel of a shotgun open? <laughs> This sounds uncomfortable. Just, okay, you know what? Let's, let's table this for later. Let's, yeah. let's go for some more chat questions here. I apologize for that visual, everybody. Um, uh, this is a question for the cast. Uh, in making the show, did any of the players learn something about Campaign One that they didn't already know? Hmm. Good question. Hmm. Surprisingly well-built plot. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. this, is, <laughs> this is surprisingly linear in a sense. <laughs> um, God, let me think. I don't know if I like learned anything new about. There were a lot of moments that I had like forgotten about, because after hundreds of hours of gameplay, you know, you forget the little moments, and so going back to, you know, the start of it and, and looking at it again, it's like, oh yeah, I, we fucking said that, you know, I just <laughs> like things that you had forgotten about and things that were really meaningful or you know great little moments between characters that like I just hadn't it had kind of disappeared over time mm -hmm. it was great to see it again I'll say that the NPC perspective stuff is kind of was blowing my mind yeah like that's, that's something we didn't know right yeah, there getting to yeah. see my answer was the bad answer. Talison's answer was the good answer. No, every answer, answer was a good every answer. answer. Was the friends that we made along the way, which is Aww. important. No, Laura's always right. That was the bad answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, getting to see the Briarwoods off on their own and, and what motivates them, and getting to see, and also getting to see Pike, and yes. like this fleshed out mm. uh, version of her her branch of the story. Yeah. Getting to see, you know, what what Matt had cooking in the back of his brain all that time. Yeah, because that's what, that's so cool. Like while we're playing, to know that everything that we're doing, Matt constantly has the world Clock still it. turning, you know, depending on what we're doing, and mm -hmm. you know, it's it's so cool to get to see that. He teases us with that all the time. I it's know. like you've only gotten there two days sooner. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, but seriously, I think yeah. <laughs> 
Now, how much is that as real, and how much is that as Matt torturing you? I don't yep. know. I think he enjoys it's, torturing yes. us. It's. I think he has a giant, giant clockwork system mm. up in his house where he just slowly watches events happen. Like, well, too late for that. Too, uh, <laughs> and it crosses it off the list. He's yeah, psyched I, us out. I know he really does that. He's <laughs> psyched us out at the table though enough times where he's like, you, you approach and nothing happens. Like I think Matt is also a little bit of a sleight of hand expert, mm -hmm. so I think sometimes he's sometimes. Uh, pulling us by the nose. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of being pulled by the nose. This is a question for everyone. Mm. Why is it always doors? Fucking <sighs> doors. How can I not? It's the simplest thing. And I, I really do believe it's doors because the shame <laughs> that comes <laughs> from being defeated by something so stupid. Yeah, like if you're if you're in the middle of combat and you knock an arrow and go and woof, and if you miss, you're like, ah, yeah, all right, oh, right, there's so much going one. on. Yeah. But if you're just like, I'm trying to get this door open, well, well it won't open. <laughs> and I'm just a dork. Well, your luck brick picks broke. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah. done. Cool, cool, cool. It's cool. not that I'm exhausted yeah. and, and heroically, like, uh, at my wit's end, I can't, I just, I just, just can't it. But it was an ongoing thing. We oh. always rolled really shittily mm -hmm. when it came to, like, getting past a doorway. Yeah. And then I, I think that Seeing it in animation is really uh, exemplif or like extremifies it more because mm. you've seen such cool, badass <laughs> action sequences. Yes. And these characters overcome impossible things and then boom. But that's the nature yeah. of the yeah. games around the table. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you create these epic moments in your mind. And then you fall also. off a roof. Yeah. Yeah. And then you yeah. fall off a roof. Or out a window. Exactly. Out a window. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, no it's also dignity. really sad to see magic failing against doors. Mm -hmm. That's always painful. It's like, I want to light that door on fire. You can't. It's a door. Sucks. You failed. You failed. I trained in the mystic arts. It's a door. It, it, if, if I recall that actual door in the game, it took three spells to open. No, it didn't. No. It took three spells. It took three spells plus. Scanlan did get cut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lockpicks broke. Because of that was a really, you did it shove a, a, a window. sword a through it, right? Yeah. And then he had to hold it from the other side. Right. Oh, <laughs> wow, so you guys right. do really. And then there was I a teleport that got in and it was just, well, you guys tried to teleport. It was just a beam. It was such a, it was such a disaster. Oh my oh, no, goodness. Cause Scanlan in the game actually bamfed in. Yeah. Cause he's like, I'll yes. just go in and I'll Burns unlock it. But he went in and it was a beam. So it was too heavy cause he's this little guy. So he couldn't lift it on his own. So then he was like, it was just never ending stupid. It was so, it was so ridiculously dumb. I to see an episode. Just one whole episode of I'm just, just door. trying to get through a door. Yeah. Doors campaign one, chairs <laughs> campaign two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll be a Christmas special. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be awesome. I love Skyways it. campaign three. <laughs> I was trying to think of a Christmas door pun and I couldn't. Uh, Dork the halls. And that uh, does it for tonight's uh, watch party. Woo! Make sure to join us again <laughs> next Tuesday, February 15th at 7 p.m. Pacific to watch the next three episodes of The Legend of Vox Machina with Ashley, Sam, Marisha, and Travis, and special guest episodic director, Young Heller. Woo! Nice. Good night, critters. Nice.